Hey guys, welcome back to Ants Midwest. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you so much for all of the love and support that I've gotten on the channel. Just recently hit 75 subs and it's amazing, so thank you guys so much. Today's video is going to be all about the life cycle of ants. So it'll go from egg, to larva, to pupa, to callow, to worker, and then I'll talk a little bit about queen elates and male drones. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the roles of workers and who is actually allowed to leave the nest. So let's get into the video. So first off are the eggs. This is one of my Campanota subarbatus colonies with actually a pretty decent amount of eggs. If you look closely you can see they're kind of elongated. Depending on what species, the egg stage will last a week to two weeks, maybe a little bit longer. These are eggs of my Chromatogaster linealata colony. You can see they're not really elongated like the Campanotus eggs are. They're kind of more spherical and they're a lot more white in color. Next up are the larvae. Again, depending on the species, this stage can last uh, a week to three weeks. Again, very dependent on the species. You can see with these larvae, you can actually see the food that is inside of them. The darker area in the middle is food that they have been filled up with. It's pretty interesting because depending on what you feed the ants, their larva can have a different tint to them. So these ones are kind of red, not because the species is red, but because I feed fruit flies to this colony and the fruit flies tend to have a little bit of red in them. Going back to my Chromatogaster linealata colony, you can see that these larvae are much different from my Aphenogaster tennesiensis larva. These ones are much more ovular in shape, and they have a yellow tint because I feed mostly crickets. You can also tell that the ridges on these are far less pronounced than the others. Now onto my favorite stage of brood development, pupa. This species has what is called naked pupa because they don't have a cocoon like some species have. With naked pupa, you can actually tell that it is an ant. You can see the head, jaws, antenna, legs, even the eyes. You may notice how some of these pupa are very white and some are kind of orangish. The ones that are orange are much closer to closing than the white ones, which means they're very close to becoming an adult worker. Here you can see my Formica montana have pupa that form cocoons. This is done by the larva spinning silk around itself. These Campanotus subarbatus also form cocooned pupa. I'm really happy with how this colony is doing, they have a really good amount of pupa for their colony size. You can tell when they are close to a closing because of the dark hue, which isn't always as noticeable in other species. The next stage would be a callow worker. This is when a worker very recently closed from the pupa stage. In this stage, their exoskeleton is very soft, so they often appear much lighter in color. You can see the callow here is light gray, whereas the rest of the workers have a dark silver color. The callow of my Aphenogaster tennesiensis colony are just slightly more orange than the dark red maroon of the workers. Pretty much as soon as a worker it closes, it must begin work taking care of the brood. This consists of rubbing their antibacterial saliva on all of the brood, feeding the larva, and making sure that all the brood is in a proper place in the nest for the humidity that it wants. Only the older generations of workers are allowed to leave the nest and forage for food. As you can see in this sugar water tube, there are no callow, and all these workers have a fully hardened exoskeleton. Next up, we'll talk about queen elates. Queen elates are born from the queen of a colony, and they are born with wings. A lot of people don't realize this, but yes, ants can fly, but only the queen elates and male drones. Now, they don't spend their lives flying around and looking for food, they just leave the nest when the time is right, take flight and lease pheromones to try to connect with a male and mate. Depending on the species, the queens and males will either mate in flight or land and mate. Either way, the queen will then begin the difficult task of biting off her wings, and then she'll search for a place to start her own colony. What's very fascinating is that after this, they don't need to mate again in their life. They have a special organ called a spermathica that keeps the sperm of a male ant alive and functioning in her for the rest of her life. The males of a colony will also take flight at the right time and search for a queen elate to breed with. The life of a male is unfortunately kind of sad. They don't do anything to help a colony. 
they just breed and then within a couple hours after they die and there you go that's pretty much all of the life cycle of an ant i don't know if you found it as fascinating as i did but i think it's very interesting thank you guys so much for watching please like and subscribe and check out some of my other videos bye